Hi everyone, it's Adrienne here um, for your music therapy minute today and I thought that it would be kind of cool to talk about the history of music therapy in a nutshell. Um, and so it's really fascinating um, looking back at the times and how music has affected people and how music has helped and how it's become much more of a profession and much more of something that's known around the area and so we're going to kind of talk about that. and so to start off with. It's the idea of music as a healing influence which could affect health and behavior is at least as old as the writings of Aristotle and Plato. The earliest study was found in 1789. There were students of Dr. Benjamin Rush who was a doctor and he was a psychiatrist. And he was a strong proponent of using music to treat medical diseases. And of course, back in that time, um, which really was not too long ago, you know, that that was just the beginning of like where the medical field became you know, prominent, and so they used a lot of natural ways to do a healing. However, the earliest study was in 1789, but actually, believe it or not, music therapy, the first known mention of music therapy is in the Bible. It's in 1 Samuel 16:23, and this is actually really cool. It says, and so it was, Whenever the Spirit from God was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand, then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. So that is basically saying that David would play his harp and um, Saul would start relaxing, which is really kind of cool, and it was it was it had a therapeutic benefit for him. Um, so skipping back to the 1800s, the first recorded music therapy intervention, which is kind of the, the basis of music therapy and the, the things that we do in, within a music therapy session, um, as well as the first recorded experiment in music therapy, um, was in the 1800s, and that was Corning's use of music to alter dream states during psychology, which is cool. You know, and I, I think of myself sleeping and dreaming and how music can affect all of that. And just, you know, I wonder if I listen to certain types of music, if it would bring about specific dreams while I'm sleeping. And um, just the fact that that information is out there is really kind of fascinating. Um, in the 1900s, we have the formation of several music therapy associations. Um, there was a continuation of a lot of research, a lot of books were published, um, there were educational courses. However, it wasn't until the 1940s that it became recognized as an academic program. So music therapy was kind of acknowledged, but it wasn't really, um, like, it wasn't really, there was no basis for the, um, the profession as an academic program. And so it was the 1960s. Kind of cool how this all came about. So they had been working on music therapy for um, people in medicine and for, for therapy. Um, in the 1960s, the program actually expanded for individuals with physical and developmental disabilities and with sensory impairments. And that was actually, the 1960s was around the time where we began um, as a society, we became more aware of the needs of those people with physical and developmental disabilities. So it's really, really kind of cool. And at that time, too, music therapy was realized, at, people realized the importance of music therapy within the changing times and within the, the changing, even if you hear the music of the 1960s that everybody listened to, it was just a really cool, like, changing time period that, that music really benefited. Um, in the 1970s, we started seeing music therapy in nursing homes for rehabilitation and for patients with medical conditions. So that's really cool. Um, the 1980s brought about a huge change in music therapy world. It kind of exploded. It catapulted. And it began what music therapy is today and that was the development of like you know the American Music Therapy Association which is the big overarching association for music therapy was developed in the 19 in 1998 and so that was that was a combination of a bunch of associations and so at this time period um, people that um, 
people really began acknowledging music therapy as a profession and something that really, really, truly works. Um, and so even now today, there's like the continuing advocacy for the importance of music therapy, um, people recognizing it as a profession um, and benefits to all the populations, ages, abilities, and disabilities. And music therapy is so wonderful. Um, and I'm sure, you, you know, using music as therapy is incredible. And it's definitely forever evolving and changing. And as people are being made more aware of the importance of music therapy and the benefits of music therapy, it's really becoming an incredible profession. And it's becoming an incredible, it's, it is an incredible experience for everyone involved. Even me as a music therapist, I think that, that sometimes I benefit more giving music therapy than my client would be receiving music therapy and it's it's just an amazing amazing profession so that is the history of music therapy in a nutshell it's really fascinating and if you have any questions about um, music therapy about how to include music therapy in your life about how to you know get involved in our music therapy program please let us at the keys program know and we would be happy to answer any questions or to just even talk with you and I hope you are all doing well and you are staying healthy and safe and I will see you again soon all right thanks guys have a great day bye